You're listening to Confidence with Katie, a podcast created for ambitious, savvy women who are ready to embrace their inner badass. If you're ready to figure out exactly what you want and how to get there, I want you to jump on in and join me, executive coach, public speaker, fire starter, and your podcast host, Katie Langford. Hey there, I'm Katie, and I am so happy that you are here for Confidence with Katie, episode number 22, five truth bombs about working with a recruiter. I know that a lot of you in my audience, you are in the process or you have been, or you will be, of searching for a job. I also know how frustrating the job search process can be. And I know that that's why you come to me, because you see me as an expert who can help you, and I can. But wouldn't it also be great if there was one person who could just match you to great companies so that you didn't have to send out 100 online applications? Enter Recruiters. Today's episode breaks down everything you need to know about working with a recruiter. And I'm talking about the pros, the cons, and the insider tips. And if you're asking, how do you have insider tips, Katie? Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. I used to be a recruiter. But before I dive into those juicy details, I want to tell you about this week's badass of the week. This week, I'm changing it up a bit. My badasses of the week are the 23 incredible women on the Junior League of Dallas auction committee. Y'all, this past Saturday, I had the honor and privilege of chairing the auction party, and we had just around 500 attendees. And I have gotten a lot of recognition and praise, but sister, there is absolutely no way that I could have done it alone. You know that I love to pour into the lives of ambitious, savvy women, but I also love to surround myself with them as well. And the 23 women who worked their butts off to make the event magical and raise tens of thousands of dollars for our community and the agencies that Junior League works with, well, those ladies are rock stars. And the reason I want to celebrate them today is because I want to remind you that when you surround yourself with badasses, it definitely rubs off on you. So thank you to my incredible committee for having my back and putting everything you had into Saturday evening. Now, let's get back to something that's been on my mind for a bit. As you know, I am all about helping you live your biggest, boldest, personal and professional life. And I know that so many of you come to me for my expertise around job searches. So today I'm dropping five truth bombs that everyone should know when working with a recruiter. But before we get into that, let me back up and tell you about my own experience with recruiters, just so you know where I'm coming from. First, I want you to know that I have worked with recruiters to get a job. In fact, several of the jobs that I've gotten are because I worked through a recruiter. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that when I talk about the truth bombs. Second, I want you to know that as a former hiring manager, I've used and hired recruiters to help me go out and identify the top talent. So I not only know what it's like to be a candidate, but I know what it's like to be a client of a recruiter. Third, and this is perhaps a very unique lens that not a lot of people have. As you know, I help women all the time transition into new jobs, get promoted, and really up level their game. So many of the clients that I have worked with, while they're going through their job transitions, they are using recruiters. So I know what it's like to be on this side of the fence with my client, the candidate, as they're getting information from and being interviewed by the recruiters. So I know that super unique perspective. And of course, I cannot forget that little secret that I let you in on. I spent six months of my career as an executive recruiter. Now, I know what you're saying. You're like, Katie, six months does not make a huge career. But I worked for one of the top retained firms in the country. And during that six months, I had top notch training. I worked for the number one partner in the firm and I was hand selected by him and his uh, his team partner. 
I worked 60 hours a week and was constantly on the phone with my candidates and with the companies trying to make a match. So I know what it's like to be a recruiter. I know what the work is and I know what I tell candidates and I know what I was trained to tell candidates. I also know what I was trained to do to tell companies. So just those four things alone, being the candidate, being the client for the recruiting firm, being a um, person who's been a coach to uh, candidates uh, getting recruited by recruiters, and being an actual recruiter gives me insight like uh, very rare, few people probably have. So I know a thing about recruiters and what I have seen and heard and my experience Well, that has helped me identify some of the most important pros, cons, and tips for working with them. And it's been on my heart because I know so many of you are working with them. So that's why today I am dropping my five truth bombs about working with recruiters. So let's get started. Truth bomb number one, internal and external recruiters are very different. So let's go over what the difference is and why it matters that you know the difference. An internal recruiter works only on positions within one specific company. And it's very typical for an internal recruiter to work for a large company. So I want you to think national companies, multinational companies, global companies, right? These are the companies that um, are hiring so many people. And typically an internal recruiter might even work specifically for one division or one department or one team. So if a company is hiring the same kind of people over and over and over, there might be a specific internal recruiter that just recruits for that position. Or there might be um, an office in a specific geographic location and the internal recruiter does the recruiting for that geographic location. But again, they have the insider knowledge of culture of the company. And what they typically do is they're the go-between between human resources and the hiring manager. And what they will do is they will typically source candidates, so find those great people. They hold phone interviews and phone screens. They help set up face-to-face interviews. They might even do a face-to-face interview with you. And they're typically the person that you're going to work with from the job offer through the negotiation process. So internal recruiter. External recruiter, on the other hand, is someone who works for an external search firm or recruiting firm. And just know throughout this podcast, I'm going to use the terms search firm and recruiting firm interchangeably. But this is someone who works for a firm. Again, they might have a geographic location they specifically work in. They might have a market industry niche, or they might have a specific title niche. So, You might have someone that just works the Chicago market. You might have someone who just recruits um, tax accountants or finance folks. Then you might have people that are so specific and have such knowledge where they're recruiting literally just one specific title, like uh, chief information officers or chief technology officers. So External recruiters are similar in the fact that they might have a different niche, um, like an internal recruiter. But the most important part is that external recruiters typically work for more than one company. They're working for lots of companies. And again, depending on what their niche is, will depend on where those companies are, how they're sourcing those companies, how they're sourcing those candidates. The important thing to know is that external recruiters get paid by the company that hires them to find candidates. So why does this matter to you? Well, it matters because they do different things. And so when we're talking about an internal recruiter, that person is going to know totally different things than an external recruiter might know. An internal recruiter can totally teach you about the company and the culture, and they might be intimately aware with the team or department or division that you're going to go and try and work for. 
Whereas an external recruiter, they might not have that same intimate knowledge, but they might have connections to many, many companies. Truth bomb number two. There are positions that only recruiters know about and you can only get to them by going through them. So this is one of the biggest pros of working with a recruiter and it's totally aligned to what I teach to my clients and my how to get a job you love students in my digital course. You have to leverage human beings in your job search. You know, people have knowledge and influence and resources that simply are not available online. Now, I want to talk a little bit about these positions, though, that only recruiters know about and you can only get through going to them. The majority of these positions that can only be secured through a recruiter are what's called a retained search. And what that means is that only that specific recruiting firm can recommend folks for the role. So let's get back to an example um, of a director of marketing. So let's say that XYZ company has hired ABC search firm to find, source, and recruit a director of marketing candidate. What's interesting about that is... Let's say that you know somebody that works at the company and they have recommended you for that role of director of marketing. You still will have to go through the search firm, the recruiting firm, ABC Recruiting, to get the job with XYZ Company. And I'll give you an example of this. Um, Back when I was still in fundraising, There was a time when I was doing a lot of networking and, you know, always keeping up with past colleagues and those kinds of things. And I had a colleague who knew about a role that she thought I would be great at, but it was only a role that was, they had a retained search firm. And so I had to go through the entire process with the search firm. Now, I also want to give you a bit more information about why this happens. This typically happens because if you are in a retained um, search, if only that ABC recruiting firm can recruit you, it's because they're retained. They're on a retainer. They're getting paid whether or not they find someone. And it typically works one of two ways, although you know, there's always exceptions to the rule, but it typically works where their search firm gets paid half up front and then half once the candidate starts, or they might be getting paid one third, one third, one third. So one third when the job search starts, one third when they source candidates and bring in for interviews, and then one third after the candidate has been at the job for set, for a certain period of time. So why I also want to tell you about what a retained firm does and why there are positions that only can be gotten through a recruiter. There are also what is considered and called contingent recruiters. So if you've ever gotten a call and they say, we have this great company and we'd like you to send your resume, but I can't tell you the name of the company and I can't exactly give you the exact title, but I can give you a roundabout, know that you're working with a contingent search firm. So a contingent search firm, um, and you'll see a lot of these in finance and tax and accounting and some in marketing and human resources. So what they do is they work with companies and they have clients at at very specific companies, um, but they might go out and they're not getting paid unless their candidate gets hired. Just want you to know that there are positions you can only get through recruiters, typically retained firms, and then there are contingent firms. Truth bomb number three. And this is the one, ladies, where jaws drop and eyes get really wide because people are shocked by this, but it's the most important truth bomb, I think. Recruiters work for the company that pays them. They don't work for you. Now, while recruiters may say and act, and I truly believe that the large majority of them do care about you, their job is not to make you happy. It is to make the company happy. 
So back when I was a retained recruiter, we would have six or seven searches going on at one time. So you're not just talking about the 25 to 30 percent based off of one position, which is around the average that recruiters get paid. So if the position is a hundred thousand dollar compensation package, then a recruiter will typically make somewhere between 25 and 30 thousand. And that's also dependent on geographic location. But if I was having six or seven of these go on at one time, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? You, as a candidate, you pay them nothing, okay? You pay them nothing. So they are interested in finding someone for the company. Their number one goal is not to help you. So if you are a great candidate and they are blowing up your phone and your text message and your email, that's awesome. But if you are like begging a recruiter to help you, help you, help you, just know that unless you're a great candidate or unless they have a position that you can fill, they don't actually care about helping you because you're not paying their bills. So I just want you to have this knowledge and I want you to take it with a grain of salt when you're working with a recruiter. Know that the recruiter gets play when they play someone. And that is their job. Their job is not to be your go-to person that can help you find the exact company you want to work for. That's just not what they do. Truth bomb number four. There is some information that recruiters can't share with you. So let me give you a few examples. Sometimes recruiters can disclose the salary range and sometimes they can't. Sometimes they can tell you how many people are in the interview process with you, and sometimes they can't. Sometimes they know that they are offering a job to someone else, but they don't let you know, and it might be because you're second choice. So they want to make sure you're still in the process in case something doesn't happen with the first choice. Side note, I want to stop right here. This isn't a bad thing to be second choice. I've seen people get really upset about being the second choice only to go get the job and then absolutely love it. So you don't need to worry about if you're the first choice or second choice. You just need to worry about is this the right fit for you. Now, let me just tell you, recruiters want to give you all the information that they have, but sometimes they just can't. And I know that this is frustrating for you. Know that recruiters are frustrated by this too. And that's why we talked about what's the difference between an internal recruiter, an external recruiter, a retained recruiter, a contingent recruiter. Each of those folks has different pieces of information. And when they can share them with you is sometimes not up to them. With that said, it is totally fine for you to ask questions. And I'm not even going to just say that you can ask questions. You should ask questions. My how to get a job you love students, they are totally nodding their head right now because this is something I really emphasize in my digital course. Ask those questions. Truth bomb number five. You know, we've talked about what recruiters can do and what they do, but here's the thing I really desperately want you to know. Recruiters cannot be your only strategy in the job search process. While recruiters do serve their purpose, they should not be your only strategy. Remember, I've already talked about you don't pay the recruiter. The company does. So they shouldn't be your only strategy. They are great people and they typically know a lot about great roles, but they're not the only people. You also need to be leveraging and engaging your professional and personal spheres of influence. So now that we've uncovered these truth bombs for you, here's what you can do. You can take the power back in your job search. You know that working with a recruiter can be hugely beneficial, but you also know it's not the only answer. And not to put a shameless plug in for myself, but you know I'm going to. You've already heard me mention my digital course, How to Get a Job You Love, twice in this episode. You can learn more about it at katielangford.com forward slash course. I'm also hosting a free live training called The Four Mistakes Job Searchers Make and How to Fix Them. 
It's totally free. It's online. And it's only going to take about an hour. And here's what I want you to know. I'm not only going to share what the top four mistakes are. I'm going to give you 16 solutions on how you can take the power back in your job search in order to get exactly what you want. And if you want to learn more about that, you can go to katielangford.com forward slash free live training. Y'all, I've shared with you before that I was the woman that was crying in my corner office. The reason why I do this work is because I don't want you to be that person. I want to arm you with the information. I want to give you the knowledge. I want to give you back the power. I truly believe that you were created for greatness. And greatness does not mean going to a job that you hate every single day. My job while you're going through the job search, it is to help you gain clarity. I want to help you articulate what you want. I want to help you learn how to interview. And I want to help you all the way through negotiating your compensation package. And just a side note, any executive coach or career coach that you work with should absolutely do the same thing. Life is too short for you to be miserable or unfulfilled for you to settle for anything less than everything you want to be, do, and have. Know that my entire life's work is centered around inspiring, motivating, and impact the lives of women just like you. I want to thank you so much for listening today. I want to help you feel confident and get where you want to go. If you haven't subscribed to Confidence with Katie yet, please do so. This is how we get this message out to people like you who need to hear it. Would you rate us? Would you leave us a comment? And if you have a friend going through the job search process, will you forward this to her? Arm her with this information. Thanks for listening to Confidence with Katie. I hope the episode helped you feel more empowered to take control of your dream life and your dream career. Go start igniting those fires and embrace your inner badass. Until next time, badasses.